Good morning, mighty companions. I want to welcome you to Facebook Live and A Course in Miracles. I'm Earl Purdy, and uh, we're going to keep talking about today how grievances sabotage your experience and keep you from having the kind of prosperity, love, abundance, and forgiveness that you want to have in your life according to the Course in Miracles. If you have a grievance, if you know you're holding on to some grievance towards anybody in any kind of way, then this is what you need to be listening to today. Yeah. And how can you tell when you're holding a grievance? Well, you don't exactly feel really thrilled when you run into the person or think about them. It's not somebody that when you think of them, you feel inspired and joyful. That's probably a person that you're telling yourself if they were different some kind of way, then you would be happy. If they changed something about the way they spoke or acted right now, you'd be happy. So if you want to get past that block, we're going to talk about that today, and this is an extremely deep, what I call a deep Course in Miracles section. And that's why I'm going through it a little at a time, because it says so many powerful things that it's easy to forget what you hear when you study the Course in Miracles, simply because what it teaches is so opposite to the way that we've been taught by the world. So when you hear something that's totally opposite to what you hear all the time, and not only that, a large part of you is acting from that old way that you've learned, then when you hear something new and different, it's extremely easy to forget what you just heard. And I say that over and over again, that the Course in Miracles is not about the analyzation of the material. The Course says that there are two ways that you change your mind and accept the truth. One of them is that you have to hear it over and over and over and over and over again. And then the other is, he says, you have to remember it. So if you're going to change your mind, if you're going to look at stuff in a new way, then you have to remember the new interpretations that you are being taught to use. So it's all about remembering. That's why in A Course in Miracles, constantly when you're reading it, you hear it saying, remember only this. Uh, don't forget this. Remember only this. Don't forget this. So what page do you need to get to, uh, Trudy? Pardon me? What page do you need to go ahead and get to? It's right by the camera, and so that the page turning oh, is going to be so like, oh, I know, I know you didn't know, no, no problem. I just want to let you get to the page. It's uh, page 124, uh, lesson 72 in the workbook. That's where we at, Darlink. All righty. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. The key to the Course in Miracles is not your understanding of Course in Miracles. The key to the Course in Miracles is remembering the new interpretations that it's giving you to use on what you're seeing and what you're experiencing. So, A Course in Miracles works at the level of your perception. It's working at the level of how you see things. So when you forget that, then sometimes it can make it a challenge to study The Course in Miracles because it's primarily working with our perception even though you can use the laws and the rules that it's given you in every single situation in your life, it's really working with the way that we see things. It's really working with our what? Perception. perception. It's working with our perception. And the Course in Miracles teaches that perception is learned. Like the way you see everything is the way you learn to see everything. The people are reacting to what they've learned. We're all reacting to our conditioning. That conditioning is coming from what we've learned, what we've taught ourselves, what we've been taught. So just because you perceive something doesn't mean that your interpretation of it is true. So we are talking about getting past blocks, blocks to our awareness. So to start off, I always like to start off with our theme song, which is, I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim, say what? Of the world I see. I'm not a victim, say what? Of the world I see. I'm not a victim, no, of the world I see. 
Think about what the words are saying. I'm not a victim of my mom. I'm not a victim of my fault. I'm not a victim of even circumstance at all. I'm not a victim of the world I see. Cause what's happening now is what I've done to me. Yeah. I'm not a victim of the future, not a victim of the past, not a victim of anything that really doesn't last. I'm not a victim, I'm not a victim, man, of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. Cause what's happening now is what I've done to me. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim no, of the world I see. No. I'm not a victim of the world I see. Say that to yourself silently. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of my financial situation. I'm not a victim of my financial situation. I'm not a victim of my financial situation. I'm not a victim of my relationship situation. I'm not a victim of my relationship situation. I'm not a victim of my relationships. I'm not a victim of my relationship situations. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim of my relationship situation. I'm not a victim of my health situation. I'm not a victim of my health situation. I'm not a victim of my health situation. I'm not a victim of my career situation. I'm not a victim of my job situation. I'm not a victim of my career situation. I'm not a victim of my job situation. Tell yourself. I'm not a victim of my spiritual situation. I'm not a victim of my spiritual situation. I'm not a victim of my spiritual issues. I am not a victim. I am not a victim. So the Course in Miracles says that the way to let in what it's saying, which is number one, just hearing it, um, that you need to remember that you need not believe the ideas, that you need not accept the ideas, that you need not even welcome the ideas. Um, some of the ideas that I say today you may actively resist. Some of the things that I say from A Course in Miracles today you may actively resist. Something that you hear me say out of this book today, you may actively resist. Some of the things you hear me say may startle you. Some of the things you hear today may be startling to you. Uh, then it says that, that we need to remember that you're not asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. That if you use the ideas, then the ideas will have meaning to you because it's using it that you see that the ideas are true. It's using it that you see that the ideas are true. So we're going to be on page 126, lesson 72 in the Course in Miracles workbook in the Foundation for Inner Peace version of the course. And we are going to start out with We're going to start out with paragraph five. Uh, actually, actually, we're going to start out with paragraph three. I want to, I want to kind of review that. Okay. Let me do a real quick review. Of course, in Miracle's definition of a grievance is always you wishing something or somebody were different in order for you to be happy. People are upset usually because there's something that they wish were different that would change outside of themselves that they would be happy. And the Course in Miracles calls that a grievance. But so most grievances are based on people not acting out another person's script. Okay, so if I have a grievance right now, then it's because there's something in my life that I think needs to be different on the outer in order for me to feel good, in order for me to feel happy. Everybody with me on that? Okay. I don't care what you're angry about. I don't care how justified you feel in your anger. It's still coming from you thinking that something needs to be different from the way that it is. Even if you go, I wish there were less crime in the city. 
and you feel really good about saying that because those are, that's the thing that good people say. It's too much crap. We need to do something about it. Still, if you're making your happiness dependent on it, there being less crime, you're still making a mistake as far as your peace is concerned, and that's still a grievance. So that means that there, there's, there's a way for you to desire that there were less crime, but you don't have to be coming from a space of giving up your peace and being angry because it's not that way. So a grievance is making your way of feeling being dependent on something going the way you want it to go on the outside or somebody acting the way you want them to act on the outside, okay? So the Course says that your Creator's plan is just the opposite of that. That your Creator's plan is that you learn how to, first of all, turn to your higher power, turn to your higher self, and also ask your higher self what to do, where to go, what to say, and who to say it to. So the plan is for you to ask for your joy and your happiness from where your joy and happiness could actually be fulfilled and be located. So that's why holding a grievance is attack on that plan. So it says in paragraph three, which I think is interesting, um, oh yeah, here's another big point that I wanna make. If you want the Course in Miracles to make sense to you, at some level start to entertain the idea that you might be more than a physical body only, and that you might be more than just a human being that is born, grows, and dies. If you leave out the possibility that you're a spiritual being having a human experience, then I guarantee you this won't make a whole lot of sense to you. And I'm not, I'm not saying you need to believe that you're a spiritual being having a human experience. I'm saying that that perspective or willingness to entertain that perspective will make everything that you're studying in the book clearer. I'm here primarily to support Course in Miracles students and anyone else who's drawn to check out my class. But first and foremost, I want to take 43 years of studying this material to help someone else who's also trying to do and help the material. That's why I always work out of the book, and that's why I encourage you, if you're in a place where you can get the book or you have the book, to follow along with me in the book, because I'm going to give you some tips about how to read it that makes it easier. Rule number one is read it. Rule number one is go slow and think about what you're saying. Don't analyze what you're saying, think about what you're saying. Like for instance, it says, although the attempt to keep the limitations that a body would impose is obvious here, what, what is it saying? Well, the Course says the minute that you have a grievance, you feel separate, you feel separate, you gotta have something to be separate in. So our idea of being separate from each other creates the physical body that we're in. The physical body that you're sitting up in right now watching me, you are in that, you appear to be in that physical body separate from me because you want to be. That's how simple the explanation is. Why does it look like we're different people sitting up in the room right now? Because we want to. And if we're going to be separate and unique and special, how do we do that? Well, I have to have a body to be separate, and that body has to look like different from your body, and then I identify with that body, and I come up with my own personality for that body, and I call it Earl Purdy. But I've actually forgotten that I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. So how do I keep my separation going? Well, if, if order for me to be separate from you, I have to keep separation going, then I have to come up with something that makes me think I'm different from you, and I have to also come up with what the Course calls grievances, which is me acting like you need to change in order for me to be happy. That's a perception of separation. There's a you that needs to be different in order for me to be happy. Okay, so that's how you ended up in a body. You ended up in a body because before you manifested in this experience, you wanted to be separate. Part of that desire to be separate and to be a human being was to forget that you made the decision to be separate. So we can't take this serious, being humans, unless we forget our unlimited spiritual identity. 
See, if I'm going to play like I'm Earl Purdy, a separate body, then I've got to forget that I'm the child of God and I'm an unlimited spiritual being and we're all one with each other and we're all joined with each other. I've got to forget that, which we've done a great job of doing in the world. I think we've done an excellent job of thinking that we're not related to each other in any kind of way and strangers to each other in any kind of way and different from each other in any kind of way. So the Course is saying grievances is the main thing that we use to keep that separation going. It's through grievances. So, so then it goes into paragraph three, which is, uh, although the attempt to keep the limitations of a body would impose its obvious here, it's perhaps not so apparent why holding grievances is an attack on the creator's plan, love's plan. Um, so let us consider the kind of things that you hold grievances for. What are the kind of things that I hold grievances for? What is it that we hold grievances for? Well, isn't it always associated with something that somebody's body does? Even if I said something to you that you didn't like, didn't my body voice it? Even if I acted the way you didn't like, was it in my body that I acted that way with? Well, the Course in Miracle says, a person says something you don't like, which a lot of people might be feeling that right now listening to me. <laughs> Right? Then he says, a person does something that displeases you. Yeah. Have you ever had anybody do anything that displeased you? Today? Has anybody done anything that displeased you just today? Okay. Uh, is anybody in your life trying to hide their hostile thoughts about their behavior? In other words, I'm acting like I like it, but I can't stand you. <laughs> That's my body and what I'm thinking being totally opposite and different. It's, the Course of Miracles says that, <laughs> I love it, it's, uh, Jesus of the Course in Miracles is so deep because, because he says that there's nothing harder for us to grasp than the obvious. And then it also, also talks about how when someone says back to us the way that we think and the way that we do, that it's hard for us to believe, even though it's what we do all the time. Like if I say it to you, uh, have, it, have anybody ever displeased you? Then if, uh, in, in, a, in a way, everybody should have basically said, if I had my script acted out, right? And everybody would have said, yes! Yeah, people do do things that displease me. Uh, people do seem like they act, they act like they like me sometimes, and they don't, and I act like I like some people. I have done that, and I don't. And then he says, um, then you are not dealing with what the person is. You're not dealing with the fact that this person is an unlimited spiritual being. You're not dealing with the fact that this person is innocent. The Course in Miracles says you're just dealing with what that person does in a body. You know, if you're worried about your partner going to bed with somebody else, what you're really worried about is what that body's going to do with somebody else's body. Is that a strange concept that we have those type of thoughts, right? The Course in Miracles is saying we're always concerned about what the body does. So if you say to someone, I am going to, I'm a free being and I'm going to do with my body whatever I choose to do with my body, you probably will be lonely on many Saturday nights because most people will be feeling fear about what you might do with somebody else's body when your body is who they think you are. So the Course in Miracles is trying to get us to understand that all we're concerned about is the body. What am I trying to earn money for so that I can feed and house and clothe the body? What, why am I working so hard to make sure I, don't, I look younger, I look better? Because I know that the way my body looks in this world has a lot to do with how much attention I get. So the Course is just basically saying what we all do. It says, well, you're concerned about what the person does in a body. He says, then you're doing more than failing to help free them. Not only am I trying to seeing you as a body, not only am I, like the Course says, failing to help free you from the body's limitations, actually I'm trying to hold you to a body uh, by confusing you with your body. I don't see you all as spiritual beings now. I just see you as the body with the different names you've introduced yourself to and the personalities that I'm relating to right now. The Course in Miracles, so I'm, in other words, I'm confusing you with your body. You are spirit, you have a body, and you're expressing yourself through your body, but I've made the mistake of thinking you are your body. That's just like me saying you are your car. When you say you are a body, you're saying the same thing as saying you are your car. 
Okay, so the Course in Miracles says, so if, I, so if I'm caught up on, well, hung up on what your body does, I've forgotten who you really are. And you know who you really are? Free. But I think I can control you and manipulate you and get you to be the way I want you to be in order for me to be happy. I'll try to use guilt and anger to pull that off because that's usually pretty successful. And uh, I've forgotten that you're a free being and that you're more than your body. And I've also forgotten, if I'm upset at you, said upset at you, that I'm the one that's giving it all the meaning that it has. So I'm the one that's making myself upset. You aren't making me upset. I'm making me upset. I'm making me upset by what I'm telling myself about what your body has done. Your body came home late today. You should have got here 30 minutes early. How come your body? Well, maybe my mind got here. Oh, my mind is. Don't, don't, don't judge me by the body. You know, the mind got here, though, but my mind is everywhere. You are not a body. You are not a body. You have a body. You're not a body. You have a body. You're not a body. You have a body. You're not a body. You have a body. You are not a body. You have a body. You are not a body. You are free. You are you are free. What are you? You are free. You're still as love created you. You're still as your creator created you. This class is for people who need to wake up and remember they're this far along on their spiritual journey that they've incarnated so many freaking times. It's time for them to go to the next level of their spiritual awareness and evolution. And that's going to call for you looking at yourself as innocent and more than a body. So that's how you're going to go to your next level of spiritual development. And this doesn't hold true for everyone. But the, fortunately, the people that it doesn't hold true to, they're not going to keep watching anyway. So I'm talking to the ones that's left. All three of y'all. <laughs> uh, hey, he said, the Course of Miracles said we forgot to laugh, and that's how we ended up in hell in the first place. <laughs> that we take everything too seriously. So please, do not take my classes seriously. I'm not asking you to get up and come here and be serious with me. Nobody. Uh, the Course is saying, let's be sincere. But we don't have to be serious. And that's why when I find myself getting heavy, I have to like, let that, okay, let some joy come through right quick because it's easy to get serious about this. Serious about what? Well, serious about somebody standing in front of you telling you that if you're expecting everybody else to change in order for you to finally be happy, you're never going to be happy on any kind of permanent basis and that you're not going to be happy and, ha and have the kind of peace you want in your life until you learn how to talk to your source, your higher self, your greater self that created you. And there are four questions that you need to ask that greater self. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Who do you want me to say it to? Then he says, well, when do you ask yourself those questions? He says, well, you ask yourself those questions every time you're getting ready to hold a grievance. I'm getting ready to get mad at you, so I need to ask God what to do. People say, what's the divine, what's the divine plan? Of course, well, the divine plan, God's plan is that you ask God. That's the divine plan. I thought you were going to tell me I had to move out of town and I had to go down to the bank and get... You no, know, I'm looking for the divine plan to be these specific physical things that I'm being told to do. I don't realize that the divine, the divine plan is me simply going to that which created me for the guidance I need to have the kind of loving, peaceful life I say I want. Wow. Wow. So... So he says, uh, when you confuse another person with their body and you judge that person as just being their body, which means I've lost sight of your unlimited spiritual identity. I've lost sight of that unlimited, beautiful, loving self that you really are. And now I'm caught up with, you know, uh, what time you got home last night? I'm caught up with something your body said it did. That's when I, I realized, oh, okay, it's all about the body. It's at this level of consciousness. When we think we're separate, it's all about the body. Everything is about the body. What the body says and does, or how, the, how special this body makes your body, right? It's all about what the body says and what the body does. So when I get upset with you as a different person from me, then I'm confusing you with the body and I've forgotten that you and I are, the, are one. You and I are the exact same being. We are one. We are the divine. We are connected. We are the same being. Now I'm caught up in what your ego does what your body does, right? And then he says, if God's child is a body, so must God be a body. Because if you're a body, then whatever created you must have been a body. And it does look like that. It looks like my body came from Georgia Purdy's body. It looks just like that. Like, her body produced my body, and my father and my mother hoped they had a good time when they conceived me. <laughs> 
So I've been having a good time pretty much ever since then. <laughs> and uh, they didn't conceive me, they conceived my body. They created something for me to enter into to fulfill my function. So what you do is you're producing the body that the soul is going to use to do its thing in the world. That's what gets born. Wow. Do you know some, some souls come here just to live a little while and then leave out of the body? And sometimes people call that crib death. But really what that is was that that soul said, ah, I don't think so. I think I, I, think I might want to do, think this through one more time a little bit more. <laughs> You, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you at another level. I'm going to talk to you as if you are spirit and spiritual beings. That's, a, that's the way Earl's going to talk in his class. Not, that, not like you're a man. Then people go, well, what, well, what is going to happen with my day-to-day -day physical reality? Well, those things are going to be taken care of because you're going to learn how to listen to your guidance and you're going to learn how to allow spirit to give you what you need in order to fulfill your function. So the, all that struggle that you're wearing about how you're going to be taken care of, you won't have that struggle because you know that you're going to be provided for by that which created you, that you're sustained by the love of God. And then first you have to confront your lack of faith, which is your fears, because your fear always lets you know where you are as far as your faith is concerned. So you can say you believe in a higher power, but if you're scared about every single solitary thing that you think could happen today, then you really don't have faith in your higher power. You're just saying it, which is good, because he says at first you need to just say it, which is great. The book says that. The first thing that you do, you say it. You say it over and over and over again. You start to consider it more and more. Then he says, then you finally accept it. And then when you accept the truth, you manifest it. You see it. So this is great. But don't make the mistake of judging uh, your progress by the things that you don't like, uh, the things that you want to change. In other words, if I see myself as a lonely person that never has any friends, and now I'm going to tune into the part of myself that knows I'm connected to everything, and I'm going to affirm that I'm not alone, then I have to realize for a little while it still might look like I don't have anybody, because that's why I'm focusing on the idea of having them. So my point is, don't, don't judge the validity of what you're trying to do by the present circumstances you have right now. So if you say you want something different, don't judge it by what you have right now because what you have right now is the result of other times in the past when you thought a different way. So your physical world is always a reflection of something you've already done. <laughs> you, you sit in that chair because you've already sat there. <laughs> you know, anything we do, and so the Course is telling us that uh, if God is a body, what must God's plan be? He says, well, what God, could God's plan be but death? Because in trying to present God's self as an author of life and not of death, basically it looks like God is a liar and God is a deceiver and God is full of false promises and offering nothing but illusions because I keep being told if I just believe in God, everything's going to go great, that I'm blessed with all these blessings and that I'm going to you know, live after death and you know, God's going to take care of this and take care of that. And it looks like that's not happening in my life. It looks like my life is having a lot of challenges and upsets and disappointments. So it seemed like th this creator that promised that I'm going to have this incredible loving experience uh, must have been lying to me, giving me false promises. And he says, if you think you are a body, then it's going to seem like your creator wasn't too kind because why would your creator who loved you create you to be something that was going to die one day and all the people that you love? What's loving about a God like that? When I was a kid, I used to ask myself those kind of questions instead of playing marbles. That's how weird I was. <laughs> and most of y'all know what the hell a marble is. I just realized that I just really dated myself quite good right there with that statement. <laughs> I mean, when marbles were like, wow, that was high tech. <laughs> so everybody get this. Everybody, are you hearing what I'm saying? Not necessarily saying you don't got to agree with what I'm saying. I'm saying, are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying to you that if you are just a body, God is cruel or doesn't exist. If you're just a body, either our creator, we don't have a creator, or we got a sadistic creator. That's the, that's the way it seems to me. That 
if you are just bodies that's going to die one day and everybody lives one time and then they get an equal opportunity to try to be successful, even though none of them start out with equal, in equal situations, and you, you're going to die and your mother and your father and your sister and everybody you love is going to die, the Course in Miracles says, well, that would seem to me like uh, God is a liar and a deceiver and, and, and making false promises that like your creator isn't real. See, I don't, I don't have a problem understanding why many people don't believe in God because I didn't. But I thought I did until I got into the Course in Miracles. And then the Course in Miracles made me clear that I was totally deceiving myself about saying I believed in God. Because I had too much fear, anger, grievances, mm -hmm. upset, and separation to really believe. But I didn't know that. So what it did was says, okay, now I can help you because you're willing to admit where you are. Now I can give you the new ways to look at things so that I'll show you that your creator really does exist. Uh, and I can prove to you your creator does exist. But I can't do that unless you are willing to admit that you don't really know. You got to admit that you don't know everything. That's what it says in the book. You got, you, I'm sorry, before I can help you, at some level you need to admit you don't know everything and that uh, since you don't know everything, you're willing to receive the knowledge. So he's telling us that uh, if God made bodies, then we would have to say God made death. Then the court says, and if the body were real, it would be difficult to escape this conclusion that, you know, uh, God made me to die one day. Look like whatever created me to die one day. I had a birthday coming up later on this week, so it looked like I'm closer to dying. Hmm. And it's been that way since the day I was born, as far as the body. Yeah. Right? Right? Right. Every day I'm closer to the day I lay my body down. You'd be amazed at how the more you get closer to what you think of that those possibilities can happen, the more you don't want to deal with a lot of petty stuff that you used to let upset you all the time. It's just amazing how you won't even let yourself be bothered with stuff you used to get all obsessed about, especially relationship stuff, because that's the way you usually waste the most time and do the most growth. You know, of course, the miracle says it's either the way you delay yourself the most is a special love relationship or it's the way you speed yourself ahead is a special love relationship. And that just depends on two things. Are you and your partner going to side with each other's innocence or each other's guilt? That's it. Yeah. But it's got to be more complex than that. No, it's not. Yeah. Every situation I'm with with my partner, I'm either, getting, I'm either being given a chance to remind my partner of their innocence and how much they're loved and how valuable they are, or I have the opportunity to go, if you were different, I'd be happy. So the Course is saying God would be cruel if God did make me a body that uh, it's going to die in a few years. That would be cruel. So the Course in Miracles says, um, I love it. it says, yeah, so what does spirit do? He says, well, if you're going to hold a grievance on a person, you're going to insist to that, you're going to insist to that person that their body is real. What does that mean? <clears throat> it says, I'm only concerned with what your body does, and I want your body to be different in order to be happy. Right? Then the Course says, then what I'm going to do every time I do that is I'm seeing you as a body. And so I'm keeping that idea that you are a physical body instead of an unlimited spiritual being uppermost in my mind. It's, it's that, he says, it, it asserts that your brother's salvation must be death. And then we hold God responsible for it. It's so, so straight up, I know it might be hard to hear this. I'll say it again. Every time I have a grievance with any one of you all, I'm making you into who I think you are instead of who you really are. Every time I say you are, if I say you are no good, that's still making you into what I want you to be instead of what you really are. If I say you're a white person, you say I'm a black person, you say I'm a man, I say you're a woman, those are all body identifications to make us forget that we're one spiritual being. That's all we really are but we have to have grievances to keep the separation going. That's what he's telling us. So every time that I want to get upset with you about something, I'm really just trying to hang on to that perception of you that you are separate from me and that you are body. That's the real game that's going down, is I'm trying to keep my separation going. We're trying to keep our separation from each other going. That's where the wars come from. That's where the racism, the attack, the anger, the upset, is all part of the plot that we have according to this to make ourselves believe we're separate from each other. And the main way you make yourself feel like you're different from somebody is to try to change them. 
So, so, so keep going. Don't try to figure it out. Your head explodes. Okay, here we go. And look, now check this next line out. What does this next line say? To this carefully prepared arena. Isn't that interesting, interesting that the Course of Miracles calls our world an arena? Just like when you watch those Roman movies where the gladiators are fighting where? In the arena. When you go to a football game, where are they? In an arena. So the Course says this whole world is an arena. He says, to this carefully prepared, prepared arena where angry animals seek, oh, I love it, angry, angry animals seek for prey and mercy cannot enter, your ego comes to save you. I'll say it again. When you're in this arena that there's so much anger and it looks like we're not having the kind of mercy that we should be having on each other, it looks like we're not having the kind of mercy that we should be having on each other, he says, then your ego comes to save you. And it says, what is your ego? Your, you. Your ego is you. Is every one of us sitting in this room? Is every one of us that's watching me live right now and thinking we are separate? That's the ego. Got it? You think you're separate from me. I think I'm separate from you. That, that us that thinks we're separate from each other, that's the ego. Got it? And so he says, well, now you are going to come to save you. Isn't that what happens? you in this world, and it looks like stuff might hurt you, and people need to change, and you're not quite happy, broken into periods where you really are happy, right? Then he says, all of a sudden, uh, it looks like there's no mercy, then you need to save you. Your ego has said, your, your ego says, I'm going to save you. See, the Course in Miracles is like watching a movie and a play. It's very visual. So if you were to read it coming from a visual perspective, it would make a lot more sense. Like, for instance, when it says, to this carefully prepared arena. Who hasn't seen an arena? Then he says, where angry animals seek for prey. We've all saw those nature soul shows that's full of angry animals seeking for prey. Mercy can't enter. That deer has had it. <laughs> that antelope is done. Mercy did not enter. He says, well, it's danger walking through Colfax, down Colfax light late at night, right? That's what the ego in me would say, right? He says, so it's going to come to save me. So he said, this is, what, so this is what you tell yourself. He said, this is what your ego tells you. It says, your ego tells you, God made you a body. Very well, just accept you are a body. You are a body. Just accept that. God made you into a little body that dies one day. Well, you are a body, and you're going to die one day. Just accept that. You are a human being that's going to die one day. Then he says, so I need to be glad. I need to accept that I'm a body that's going to die one day, and I need to be glad about it. There are a lot of people that think they would be glad when they're dead. Like after death, then they're going to have it made. Right? So the Course in Miracles says, let us accept this and be glad. So as a body, since you're nothing but a body, and you're not going to live forever, since you're nothing but a body, and you're not going to live forever, don't let yourself be deprived of what the body offers. Since you know you're a body, and you're not going to last forever, then, then don't let yourself be deprived of everything the body can offer you. Let yourself have everything the body can offer you. You were made a body, you're only a body, you better let yourself have everything the body can possibly get and the body could possibly offer you. You need to get every physical pleasure you can possibly think of. You need to come up with every kind of thing that could be fun for you that you could come up with because you're a body that's going to die. So you need to accept that. you got a limited number of days, so you better try to get that house. Okay, then he says, and then he, then he explains it, right? The next thing he says, take the little you can get. God gave you nothing. That's why you're out here hustling, dude. Your creator didn't take care of you, didn't give you anything. So you need to take the little you can get. That's what just, don't we call that robbery? And isn't that basically what robbers do? They just take what they can get, right? Don't you see people do that with jobs? They just take what they can get. Sometimes they do it with relationships. They just take what they can get. Then they do it, you know, how many, where in your life are you just taking what you could get? That you're just settling for what you can get. Are you really in a relationship that thrills you? Or you just don't want to be by yourself? Mm. Are you really going to work tomorrow doing something that inspires you? Or are you just taking the little you can get? 
So the Course in Miracles said, well, you tell yourself, God gave you nothing. The body is your only savior. He says, well, that's the death of God, and that's the death of your salvation, which is your peace. If you look at things as if you're a body that's going to die, and you just need to be out for what you can get, because you're not going to be around very long anyway, then you'll never know what true happiness is. You'll never know what true joy is. You'll never know what true love is. If you think you're a person that's just a body, and you're just trying to let yourself be deprived of what you think the body offers, and you're just trying to take the little you can get, if you feel like your creator hasn't really given you anything or really helped you out, and that your body is your savior, so all you do is think of how you can make your body more comfortable, more beautiful, more attractive, or whatever, if you think that that's all that's going to take care of you, he said, well, that's the death of your real happiness. You can have some phony happiness. You can have some happiness that comes and goes. Yeah, you can sell it for it just what your body offers you. And you can have happiness that comes and goes, comes and goes. And you're totally innocent. Nothing's going to attack you. Nothing's going to condemn you. Your creator would never condemn you. True love would never condemn you. Something that really loved you would never condemn you. So that means that if you want every physical pleasure that you can possibly think of, nothing's going to punish you. But you are, if you're looking at yourself as only a body and that's all you are, then he says, well, that's the death of the plan of you having real permanent happiness. You can have temporary happiness. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of temporary happiness. I'm sick of up and down, up and down. I'm tired of the miracle around the hill. You get one thing handled, then something else comes up. You get that handled, then something else comes up. You're looking for somebody to change in order for you to be happy. You, th you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like the Course is saying, it takes a whole lot of work to forget who you are. <laughs> the minute you forget who you really are is when your life becomes a struggle. So you want to know how aware you are? How much struggle do you see your life as being right now? What area of your life do you see yourself as struggling in right now? That's the area of your life that you're lying to yourself the most. Tell me where you're the most unhappy and I'll show you where you're lying to yourself the most. Then you might find out you're a big liar. That you lie to yourself and say you're unworthy or lie to yourself and say that you're not loved or lie to yourself and say you don't deserve abundance and kindness or lie to yourself and say you deserve to be something that's going to die at a certain... You know, the course is that's lying to yourself. That's, that's de you deceiving yourself because you're an all-powerful being. An all-powerful being that creates through your thoughts. And so everything that seems to happen to you, you are asking for it and receiving it as you have asked. But you don't have to believe that. You don't have to accept that. You don't have to welcome that. Remember, I said some of it's going to be hard to believe and quite startling. Remember, I said that. Some of the stuff you might not welcome, some of the stuff you might not agree with. The Course in Miracles I've found has been the one book I've ever read that's guaranteed to have something to offend everyone. <laughs> I don't care how open-minded the person has, has said about the Course in the 50 years, I've, 40 years I've been working with it. They always run across their line or their paragraph that clashes with whatever their belief is. Um, and I love that. I used to wonder why this book was so hard for people to read. It's, it's not that it's so hard for us to read. It's just that it will require us to question every value that we have. <laughs> it, it will require us to take more responsibility and not blame other people. And guess what? I just gave you the universal belief of the world we're looking at. Now, now the Course says, now let me tell you the attitudes that people have toward the body and everything about the body. Okay? And I'd like to give you a test and see which one of the categories you fall in as far as what he says that we feel about the body. Okay? He says, um, some hate the body. Some people hate their body. I, I've never liked my body. My ego has never liked my body. So I know that feeling of hating your body. Um, some people try to hurt the body. And some people try to humiliate the body. Different attitudes toward the body. Then the Course in Miracles says, some people try to glorify the body. Now, that's really a big deal, I think, happening right now in the world, don't you? 
Don't you think the glorification of the body is a big deal right now? I mean, have, have you ever seen people more focused in on how their bodies look? Think about it. I've never seen people work out like they do now. And just so many things. I see the fashions, the, the uh, social <laughs> media. It, to me, it seems like a great big glorification of the body. A whole lot of glorification of the body. It's not a sin to glorify the body. So by the way, please don't let your guilt tell you that I'm saying you got to sacrifice the pleasures of the body. I'm not saying that you got to not eat another ice cream cone. I'm not asking you to sacrifice. The course is not asking you to sacrifice the pleasures of the body. You know why? Because your body doesn't have any hope of pleasure. It's never your body that's desiring what you want. It's you desiring what you want, using your body to get it. Your body doesn't want anything. Your body doesn't make any decisions about what you're going to do the rest of the day. The body just follows orders. So the body really is not responsible for its condition because it didn't think it up. Ooh. Ooh. My body is just witnessing to my beliefs about myself. Wow. I, see, this kind of stuff turned me on. Does anybody else here get turned on by this kind of stuff? If I'm by my, oh, anybody out there? Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm telling y'all that y'all unlimited, powerful, spiritual beings that deserve to be happy no matter what. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> you know, it, it, it amazes me how much I don't appreciate the loving thoughts that are given to me. It's amazing. My capacity to receive these to increase. What about yours? You know, your capacity to receive a compliment, to receive support, to receive love. So he says, uh, some people try to, some people hate the body, some people try to uh, humiliate, humiliate the body, some people try to humiliate the body, I don't like it. Others love the body. There are some people that love the body. I 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 love the body. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I love the body. And all those others out there that do too, I want to meet you. <laughs> Do stuff with people that's like you. You'll probably experience it. You know what I'm saying? It's like I used to say I want to have experiences, and then I would be with the very people who didn't want to have that experience. And I, I was thinking about how many times I chose opposites in relationship. Somebody whose values were just the opposite of mine. And I would find that would be the person that I would be seeking to be in a relationship with. So we'd be spending a whole lot of our time trying to change each other rather than enjoying the relationship. It's like, it's like, wow, don't do that, whoever's out there doing that right now, including me. Are you still tempted to do it? That's why I like to read out of the book because the course can be a challenge to read. So I find that a lot of times I've found from the comments and support that I've been getting that uh, a lot of things, because I work out of the book, people are hearing it for the first time. And they go, I, oh, I'm hearing that for, because they don't read yet because they haven't gotten past the block. That's why I, I think that many Course in Miracles students have never heard the Course in Miracles. And I feel like my job as a messenger is to get the word out, not try to tell everybody how they should necessarily see it. Right? Like he says here, um, some hate the body, some try to hurt the body, some humiliate the, humiliate the body, some love the body. I love the body. I love the body. I love the body. I love the body. Because loving it certainly can't hurt it. I mean, if I'm going to do anything with my body, loving it and loving the body it sounds like the coolest thing I could do. And certainly not the worst thing I could do. So loving something is always good for it. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I have the temptation to think if I say I love the body, I'm loving something that I'm not supposed to love, like it's something bad for me to love. Love, because I was taught to, that there was a lot of sin and guilt around the body through my religion when I was growing up. So some people try to exalt the body. Uh, now I want you to hear this sentence. 
While the body stands at the center of your concept of yourself, you are attacking God's plan for your happiness. What? While the body stands at the center of your concept of yourself, as long as you think you are just a physical body, as long as you think you are just a physical body, just a human being, as long as you think you're just a human being, you're actually attacking God's plan for your happiness. There's a plan for your happiness, but you are blocking it because you think primarily that you are a body, a separate physical human body. And that idea that you are just a body is blocking your permanent happiness. Now, I'm not talking about temporary happiness. I'm not talking about the happiness you get from going to a movie. I'm talking about Happiness that you can always count on love, you can always count on this permanence that's going to always be there, that never ends and only expands. So I have to say stuff like that because I got to introduce these ideas into my mind and into my life because it's ideas that manifest everything and an idea doesn't get strong until you repeat it over and over again. That's why I'm saying stuff that either wakes people up or put them to sleep right now. Because I'm introducing ideas that may be beyond their concept of themselves right now. And so what so use that that, that creates two reactions. It either knocks the person out cold because it's not relating to anything they think their problems are, or somebody else that totally wakes up and they make them wake up and go, hmm, I think I want to move more in this direction. So I need to understand what? I need to understand that as long as I think I'm just Earl Purdy, this man of color that teaches A Course in Miracles, I'm actually attacking the plan for my happiness because the plan involves me recognizing who I really am as a spiritual being and me asking my creator for guidance. But if I think I'm just a regular human being that's going to die one day, then that belief, he's saying, that belief is blocking the plan. <laughs> he said, he said uh, in other words, this is so funny. You're holding grievances against God. <laughs> so what? He said, you're holding a grievance against love. You're holding a grievance mm -hmm. against love, and you're holding a grievance against love's creation. Because if you keep insisting that you're just a body that's going to die one day, and that's all you are, that's an insult to God. If you think you're just a victim of everything that happens to you and you have no power in your life and you have no power to create any of the joy that you want in your life, then you are identifying with being a little weak body that's going to die one day and that is blocking God's plan for your total and complete happiness. There's a plan for your total and complete happiness. There's a plan for your total and complete happiness. There's a plan for you to have total and complete happiness in everyone and everything you know. There is a plan that allows everyone to have love. There's a plan that allows everyone to have love. There's a plan that allows everyone, including you, to be loved. There is a plan that includes your happiness, too. There's a plan that includes your safety. There's a plan. There is a plan. There is a plan for everybody. There is a plan. There is an answer. But as long as you think you're just little human beings that's going to die one day, then you are not going to recognize your spiritual power, which will allow you to get out of everything that causes you any kind of pain just by being who you are. So you're going to start attracting more and more people who will accept you and let you be what you are. Which is most of the world. Most of the world is not interfering with you. 
is not trying to get you to change. It's only the special people in your life, in most cases, that you're trying to change or to get them to change. The vast majority of the world is already letting you be. And I was like, going, wow, that is so deep. That is so deep that as long as I think I'm a body that's separate from you, that's going to block that plan. So the Course says that's you holding the grievance against love and love's creation. And why are you holding that grievance? He says, well, there's a part of you that doesn't want to hear the truth. There's a part of you that doesn't want to hear the truth. There is a part of you that doesn't want to hear the truth. There's a part of you that doesn't want to hear the truth. So if it can keep you thinking that you are just this limited body that's going to die one day, then that allows that part of you that doesn't want you to be happy to continue to rule your life. If you want to get rid of the part of you that doesn't want you to be happy, all you have to do is to recognize that you're more than you think you are and allow yourself to be helped. You need to allow yourself to be helped. The Course in Miracles is trying to teach you how to let yourself be healed. It's trying to teach you how to let things be done for you. There are things that can be done for you. Your healing, your happiness, your peace, your joy, that could be given to you and it could come to you right now if you were willing to stop attacking the plan by thinking everybody else needs to be different in some way for you to be happy and stop attacking the plan by thinking you're just a human being that was born to die one day and realize that you are an eternal soul that lives forever that has a slight case of amnesia. <laughs> severe. Severe, right? And so you get together in something like the Course in Miracles so you can remember together because in the world you will not hear what I just told you today in general. Generally, you won't hear it unless you seek it out really hard. So I'm thankful to you for being able to talk to you from this level every Sunday. Because you're going to strangely start to find things are going to start unfolding for you in a more and more harmonious way just because you were willing to hear something different. Last sentence of paragraph seven. Your chosen savior takes the place of your guide, the Holy Spirit. What are you talking about? Earl, if you're gonna save yourself, <coughs> you taking the place of God. The fact that you're trying to take care of you and the, and the fact that you're trying to save yourself and you're not taking the time to learn how to communicate with your higher self. He says, you've taken my place and so I'm love, I'm your peace, I'm your joy, I'm your God, I'm your guide. You are in charge now. So you are your chosen savior. And so now it's you coming up with the way you think things should be is your friend. Your ego is your friend. And it looks like, it looks like the truth and love is your enemy because it looks like love can hurt you. So it looks like God is your enemy. It looks like your creator might be trying to get you to do something you don't really want to do. But guess what? Your ego is your friend. And so that start, keep on listening to your ego. Keep on listening to the part of you that's afraid and angry. Keep listening to that part of you. Because if you keep listening to that part of you, you know why you're not happy. You're listening to the wrong voice. Someone attacking you, telling you you're not beautiful and innocent and radiant and valuable and important. 
you can say, oh, that person doesn't see me. That person doesn't recognize me. So I could hurt myself through them. I talk to somebody and they tell me that they think they're a spiritual being and they're having a human experience right now and they're trying to learn forgiveness and how to see things clearly. I know that's a being that's already awakened, but they don't know it. See, what you want to be is what you think you are. The Course of Miracles says, whatever you want to be is what you already think you are. So if you're here today and you want to be more loving and you want to be more sane and you want to know who you really, your power, it's because you already think you are sane. You already think you are powerful. You already think you are loving. You already think you are lovable. Or you wouldn't be trying to be on your spiritual path and learn these things. And I'm here to tell you the hardest thing in the world to tell people sometimes is that you are precious. You are loved. You are valuable. And you really are something that doesn't die. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, because he goes, next he goes into how we stop the attack. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Mm. So let's take a breath right now. Don't forget to listen to this at least four times. Listen to this at least four times. Listen to this at least four times. Especially if you feel a little disoriented or a little, if you feel anything other than comfort right now, then let yourself hear it again. That meant you really heard something. That meant it really was something that you might need to take another look at and let yourself hear again. Thank you for sharing with me. Thank you for sharing with me. Um, your total blessings in my life. As a full-time teacher of the Course in Miracles, thank you. And you can use Zelle or PayPal or Cash App or Venmo. Thank you. Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. I'm a double for one-on-one sessions called Clarity Sessions. Go to my website, earlpurdy.com, and you can get more details about it, and you can self-book an appointment with me, a session with me right online. Let me help you. Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, we do hardcore Course of Miracles on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook Live. 7 p.m. Mountain Time, online only, every Thursday night. And then Sundays, we are having a Course of Miracles Facebook Live at 1 p.m., 1 p.m. Mountain Time. And you can attend in person. You can attend in person. At 1555 Race Street. 1555 Race Street in Denver, Colorado. Colorado, 80206. And I put all of my classes on YouTube. So you got hundreds on YouTube. I'm really here to be truly helpful. I'm, I really want to be truly helpful. So keep on breathing. And I'll wind it up.
So here's the thought. I, I am not a body. I am free. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as love created me. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as love created me. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as love created me. Mighty companions, you are more of a blessing to me than you can even possibly imagine. I'm more grateful to you than I can express. I get mad about that sometimes. <laughs> you are saving my life and everyone you love. Hey, I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you so much. May the what? Course, Course be with, with you. you. Could you acknowledge you all? Come on, bring yourself back. Come, come on, acknowledge you. Come on, acknowledge you. Let's acknowledge us. We cool. Absolutely. I know. I know. It's hard to acknowledge when I've been turned to stone. You know what I'm saying? So I always... Uh